Continuing with our study of various techniques to calculate integrals, we are now going to look into trigonometric substitutions. So this is something we are going to use as a rule of thumb for integrals in, in which we need to transform expressions such as a square minus x square, a square plus x square, x square minus a square into one square. So in particular, when we have a square root of such an expression, such a difference or sum of squares, then if we can uh, transform what's under the root as one square, then we have square of a square root, I'm sorry, square root of a square, which gives us absolute value of what's under the root. And, well, with the appropriate restrictions, so we can drop the absolute value. So to do that, the idea would be to para parameterize x um, as a trig function and then use an appropriate uh, trig identity to transform our, dif our difference or sum of squares into one square. And so we parameterize x as a function of, say, another variable theta. And that means that uh, we're going to replace x by g of theta and dx uh, by the derivative of g of theta, in other words, g prime of theta d theta. The condition for that to work is that g is 1 to 1, so that going the other way really corresponds uh, to a regular change of variable. So let's take a look at what kind of uh, parameterization of x we're really going to do in each one of these three cases. Uh, in the first case, we're going to parameterize x as a sine theta. Now remember that here we have to restrict ourselves to a case where sine theta is 1 to 1, and we're actually going to get the same restriction on theta as what we did to define arc sine. Remember that the um, inverse sine function arc sine was the inverse function of the restriction of the sine function to the interval negative pi over 2 pi over 2. So here we take the same restriction for theta. And the trig identity that we're going to use to obtain the root of 1 square uh, is the fact that 1 minus sine square of theta is cosine square of theta. So if in my root now I replace x square by a square sine square of theta, you can factor out a square, and then you get root of a square times 1 minus sine square, in other words, root of a square cosine square theta using the identity. So now we transform what we had under the root as a single square. A good thing to keep in mind here is that when you take x equal a sine theta, that means sine theta is x over a, and you can represent that in the triangle as the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. And uh, this is a good picture to keep in mind when we will try to go back to x. Right? Remember that what we want to do is calculate integrals. So we start with an integral of a function of x. We are going to rewrite things in terms of theta. And eventually we will have to go back to x. So this picture is of the triangle is something that you should keep in mind when you do this uh, trig substitution. So we have this ratio um, of the opposite side to the hypotenuse that is x over a. We use the Pythagorean theorem in that right triangle and uh, we obtain that this side should be the square root of a square minus x square which is exactly the expression we are trying to uh, parameterize differently. Looking at the second row in this table, uh, now this time we are going to use as a substitution x equal a times tangent of theta and again we have to restrict ourselves to an interval of values for theta that makes a tangent 1 to 1 and the typical thing to pick is negative pi over 2 2 pi over 2 the open interval and this is also uh, the interval for which arctangent is defined as the inverse function of the restriction of the tangent function to that interval the identity that we're going to use now is that 1 plus tangent square of theta is equal to secant, secant squared of theta so now a square plus x square becomes a square plus a square tangent square of theta. Factoring a square, you get root of a square times 1 plus tangent square. So that's root of a square secant squared of theta. So we have again root of a square. Now, if x is a tangent theta, you can again 
picture set in the triangle. The tangent is x over a. The tangent is really sine over cosine, in other words, the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the ratio of opposite side to adjacent side should be x to a. And using the Pythagorean theorem, you see that the hypotenuse should be uh, the root of a squared plus x squared. In other words, again, the expression that we're parameterizing. Looking at the last row in our table, uh, we want to express in terms of theta in such a way that we have root of a square, uh, the expression x squared minus a squared. In that case, we're going to use x equal a sequence of theta. Uh, we have some strange restriction here for theta to make sure that we restrict ourselves to an interval on which the secant is a one-to-one -one function. Namely, if x over a is greater than 1, in other words, if the secant is greater than 1, we're going to restrict theta to 0 included to pi over 2 excluded. And if the secant is less than 1, x over a less than 1, less than or equal to 1, we're going to take theta greater than pi over 2 and less than or equal to pi. Uh, this is best understood by taking a look at the graph of the secant function. Uh, namely, you see that the secant function is either greater than 1 or less than negative 1. And um, you see the kind of restriction you need to make it 1 to 1. Right? For the branch that is greater than 1, you see that to make it 1 to 1, you have to um, take just half of the um, bell-shaped curve. And, um, and one way to do that is to restrict yourself to 0 pi over 2. And then when x is less than negative 1, again, we have to take just one half of these uh, bell-shaped curves. And uh, one way is to restrict yourself to pi over 2 to pi. Now, for the identity that is going to give us a square, we use, in fact, the same identity as uh, in the previous row, except that we're going to write it secant squared minus 1 is equal to tangent squared. If x is equal to a secant of theta, that means secant is x over a, and secant is 1 over cosine. That means cosine is a over x, and you know that in a right triangle, the cosine is simply the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse is a over x. Writing out again the Pythagorean theorem in this right triangle, we get that the missing side is root of x squared minus x squared. Again, um, the expression we are trying to express differently. Now let's take a look at an example. Let's say we want to integrate 1 over x squared root of x squared plus 4. With the techniques we've seen so far, there's not a lot we can do. The only things we could attempt is a substitution with u is x squared plus 4, but then um, we don't really have anything like du. We would need to have something like x dx at the top, and we don't, and we have this uh, x squared at the bottom. So because we have a root of uh, x squared plus a constant, we can try uh, to use this trigonometric substitution that we just have discussed. Specifically, we have this kind of roots which matches this root of a squared plus x squared. So that means we're going to um, try to parameterize x as a tangent theta, where a is the root of the positive constant. So in this case, a should be 2. In other words, we're going to set x equal to 2 tangent theta, with the restriction that theta is strictly between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, to make sure that tangent is 1 to 1 on that interval. In that case, dx is 2 times the derivative of tangent times d theta, so we get 2 secant squared theta d theta. And so in my integral, I'm going to replace dx by 2 secant squared theta d theta. x squared is really 4 tangent squared theta. And I replace it both outside of my root and inside the root. Now what we want to do is to use this identity. So we're going to factor out 4 inside the square root. And then replace tangent squared theta plus 1 by secant squared theta. And now, well, here the only thing uh, 
that happen is that I replace tangent squared plus 1 by secant squared and I pulled out the 4 out of the square root which gives me a 2 out of the square root. Now remember that we use this restriction that theta is between negative pi over 2 and, and pi over 2 which means that cosine and therefore secant is positive on this interval. Therefore when I take the square root of secant squared theta even though formally I should get absolute value of secant theta but for the interval of theta that I'm considering the secant is positive and therefore I obtain just secant of theta. So I get 2 secant squared of theta divided by 2 secant theta the 2 cancels out, 1 of the secant cancels out and I obtain simply secant of theta divided by 4 tangent squared of theta. I'm going to rewrite that in terms of the standard functions uh, sine and cosine. Secant is 1 over cosine, tangent is sine over cosine, so 1 over tangent squared is going to be cosine squared over sine squared. And you see that 1 of the cosine is going to cancel out. And therefore we get 1 fourth integral of cosine of theta divided by sine squared of theta. Now you see that what you have at the top is the derivative of sine and at the bottom you have a power of sine. So with the change of variable u is sine of theta and du is cosine theta d theta which means that I can rewrite my integral as one fourth integral of du over u square. In other words it's integral of a power of the variable namely u to the negative 2. When I integrate I get u to the negative 1 over negative 1. In other words negative 1 over u. Multiply by 1 fourth I get negative 1 over 4u up to a constant. So this is what I have so far with u equals sine theta. So rewriting this in terms of theta I get negative 1 over 4 sine theta up to a constant for my integral. But of course my integral here I'm seeking an antiderivative of the function 1 over x square root of x square plus 4 and of course I want that in terms of x. So I have to rewrite things in terms of x. So how do we do that? We're going to look at this triangle. This is where uh, this picture is useful. So in this case we have um, x is 2 tangent theta and as a word tangent theta is x over 2 and the tangent is the ratio of the opposite to adjacent side. So that means uh, we can represent the situation in this right triangle opposite side is x, adjacent side is 2 and therefore the hypotenuse is root of x squared plus 4. In this I can calculate 1 over sine. Sine is opposite side over hypotenuse so 1 over sine is hypotenuse over opposite side. In other words I get negative 1 fourth of the root of x squared plus 4 divided by x all this up to a constant. And now I have found my antiderivative. Now let's look at another example. We look at the um, integral from 0 to 3 of root of 9 minus x squared. Now we could jump on that and say okay I have root of something of the form a squared minus x squared so I can use the first row in my table and do the trick substitution x equals 3 sine theta and crank up the calculations. As you have th seen in the previous example though Using trick substitution um, usually leads to pretty heavy calculations. And so if there's any way we can avoid to use trick substitution, we use. We, we should. So in particular, when you can use a regular substitution, you should. And you should always check that. And also, when you can calculate your integral geometrically, then uh, sometimes it can save you save you time when compared to using trick substitution. In that case, if you draw a picture of the graph of root of 9 minus x squared, you can easily see that the graph of root of 9 minus x squared is really nothing but the upper half circle centered at the origin of radius 3. Right? In other words, the circle of equation x squared plus y squared equal 9. So the integral from 0 to 3 for that function, that positive function, is really just the area under the graph over 0, 3, which is a quarter of this circle. So, we don't have to do heavy, heavy calculations. The area of the disk 
of radius 3 is pi times 3 squared. So now what we have here is just one fourth of that, so we get 9 pi over 4. And there's no need for using a trick substitution, even though that would work, and it's probably a good exercise for you to try to verify this, um, uh, this result using trick substitution. Now let's turn to an example where we're going to need it. So I have again the same kind of root in it, root of 9 minus x squared, but this time I divide by x squared and I lose, therefore, my geometric interpretation in terms of the circle. So I can um, match this type of uh, expression with what I have um, in the first row of my table, and therefore I'm going to use the substitution x equal 3 sine theta with theta, theta um, in the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. In this case dx is going to be 3 cosine theta d theta and therefore I'm going to replace dx accordingly in the integral and replace x squared by 9 sine squared. So this is what I obtain. Now I want to use this identity that 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared so I'm going to factor 9 inside the square root, and I'm going to have square root of 9, 1 minus sine square. And you see that I also cancelled the 3 of 3 cosine theta, because I have 3 over 9, I have 3 at the top, 9 at the bottom, so I just get a 3 at the bottom. Now I replace 1 minus sine square by cosine square, pull out the 9 out of the square root, that's going to give me a 3. And now I have square root of cosine square. But because of this restriction, from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, the cosine is positive. And therefore, when I take root of cosine square theta, even though formally it should be absolute value of cosine, I am on an interval where cosine is positive, so I just get cosine. So I end up with 3 cosine times cosine, that's 3 cosine square over 3 sine square. The 3 cancels out and I just get the integral of cosine square theta divided by sine square theta. Well, I can use the same identity again and write cosine square as 1 minus sine square and then split the fraction. So it's 1 over sine square minus sine square over sine square, in other words, mi minus 1. And now, this is really just the integral of cosecant squared minus 1 and an alternative of cosecant squared is negative cotangent because the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Entire derivative of 1, of course, is theta. So now I have an entire derivative of the square root of 9 minus x squared divided by x squared as a function of theta. I want that as a function of x, of course, so you have to go back to expressing this in terms of x. To do that, I'm going to use again this picture, this triangle. So I interpret the fact that um, sine theta is x over 3, in other words the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is x to 3, and then using the Pythagorean theorem I get square root of 9 minus x squared for the missing side in my triangle, and I'm going to use this triangle to express cotangent. Cotangent is cosine over sine, in other words the adjacent side over the opposite side, so root of 9 minus x squared over x. On the other hand, because x is equal to 3 sine theta, that means sine theta is x over 3, and now I can use the arc sine function because remember that arc sine is defined as the inverse function of the restriction of the sine function precisely to the interval that we have picked for theta. So, that means that theta is arc sine of x over 3. And therefore, my entire derivative is negative root of 9 minus x squared divided by x minus arc sine of x over 3, all this up to a constant. Now we're going to see more examples in the next video.